Come on, let's go. Hi friends, welcome to the Wild Side. I'm Steve Hall. One of the best investigative devices ever created is the nose. Now think about it, how many times parents have smelled a rat, sniffed out the evidence, and caught their kids in an act of disobedience. But far greater than the human nose is the one given to bloodhounds. Despite their lazy appearance, they are among the most diligent detectives alive. Wildside guide Annette No Hall takes us to Henry Horton State Park, the wetlands along the Duck River, to watch a bloodhound hunt. An adventurous hiker can easily get distracted, disoriented, and even lost on more than 1,100 miles of Tennessee trails. Just as quickly, most get right back on track. But there have been cases where kids have traveled into treacherous territory, and their efforts to find a way out turned against them. He was lost on the Rainbow Falls hiking trail, and as he tried to find his way out, he found a creek, and he assumed that was Rainbow Falls. It would lead to the falls, and he was correct. However, the higher he climbed, the more dangerous it got, and he slipped and fell off a bluff to about 100 foot to his death. It was more than 25 years ago, but Tennessee State Park's Chief Ranger Shane Petty still remembers how distressed he felt by the search party's inability to find 13-year-old Brad Levy shortly after he disappeared in the Great Smoky Mountains. Then another boy went missing. 10-year-old Philip Roman wandered off from his family up at Clingman's Dome. And the hardest thing that it came for us is to see mom and dad every day when we came out of the woods and we just didn't have anything we could tell them. We hadn't found a footprint. We didn't find a piece of their clothing. Rescue resources were somewhat limited at the time and three days went by before rangers finally found one of Philip Roman's footprints. The young boy was injured, but he was still alive. And so after those searches were over, I just kind of searched myself of what would be my calling in Tennessee State Park. <laughs> Shane Petty hails from a family of hound owners, and so it only made sense to set about studying the different breeds. He settled on the one best known for the most successful finds. That is why when you go to a prison, you know, they predominantly have bloodhounds because that's exactly what they use. They're man trailers. In fact, his very first bloodhound came from notorious Brushy Mountain State Prison, a gift from retired FBI agent Bob Swabe. When he was with the FBI, he had a bloodhound named J. Edgar Hoover, and he used J. Edgar to actually find James Earl Ray when he broke out of Brushy Mountain Prison. Shane now has J. Edgar's old collar given to him after Bob's death. His newest bloodhound, the one he believes will be his last, is aptly named Sway. She is full of energy. She is the hardest, strongest working dog that I've ever had. This is not the dog you want to be your retirement dog. This is the dog you want to be when you're 25. But then the dig deep push and pull of an energetic bloodhound is how it all comes together when you are searching for a lost soul. When people call me and say, Shane, I'm gonna get a bloodhound for a pet. I say, no, you don't. They're not a pet. They will not sit on the porch. You can't walk them down the road. They'll drag you down the road. That's their hunt drive. Swabe is only two years old and she has already found two missing people. And when she's given the command and when she finds the scent, you know, you better hold on because it, it's going to be a, it's going to be a race. We've heard what this dog has done and we've heard what she can do. So now we're going to put her to the test and see if she can track her own trainer. They're smelling the scent of an individual. So you think of an individual on a four-wheeler. They're not touching, their feet are not touching the ground, but their air follicles are touching the ground, and that's what the dog is starting to trail. Find them. Good girl! Good girl! Good girl! A search might just be a hundred yards, but Shane has tracked with a bloodhound as far as 14 miles. He's found almost 300 people in his career including quite a few criminals. One of the most memorable kidnapped a four-year-old boy, and even though he hid amongst the wrecked cars in an automotive junkyard, it was no match for a keen canine. Their nose is about a thousand times better than a human, but when you get around that much contamination, it's almost impossible to find them. But the dog, I mean, she trailed perfectly. She showed us exactly where he crossed the fence, and she alerted on the 
boxcar to where he was, so we didn't have to put ourselves in harm's way. We were able to just sneak up there easily, and it's kind of funny without really the dog talking to me, she told me he's in there. And so in this major search that it was taken all day long, it took about 12 minutes to rescue the little boy. A rescue measured in minutes is only possible after logging hundreds of hours training, not just for the dog, but also the handler. The key to training a bloodhound is reading the dog. If you find the right genetic dog, the dog's got it. You just have to let them chase people and read the dog. And when you almost always have a pup in training coming up behind the other bloodhound that is ready to hunt, you need people willing to play the part. My daughters have probably played hide and seek more than any kids in the state of Tennessee. They were required to do it every day of their life, and that was just part of our family. I was maybe four or five when he got his first bloodhound, so it was just, um, it was like playtime for me. We would get the dogs out and play, but what I didn't realize was we were training her to do, um, to really go out and find lost kids and, and also criminals. But um, for me, it was playtime. You know, it was a hide and go seek game with our pet, um, but it really just logged the hours in for training for her. Now it's the grandchildren logging hours of outdoor playtime, hiding and hoping in spite of strong winds that Swabe will be able to find them. So as, as y'all laid the trail, you went to the right side of the tree and you were expecting right. the canine yeah. to come to the right side of the tree. However, she went to the left. Reason being is we've got a wind coming in to our side and it's blowing the scent. So the scent doesn't drop exactly where your footprints are. It's going to go with the wind and that's exactly where she was. It's added a challenging element. As we're reminded, Swabe isn't following our footsteps. She's picking up on the skin cells that have fallen off of our bodies and are on this particular day blowing in the wind. Does the dog always find you? Yeah. Do you like hiding from the dog? Yeah. Even just playing a game of hide and seek or playing in a park, most any parent knows it's risky to turn your head away from an adventurous child. They don't have that thinking process. They have no sense of danger, and so they're gone. Um, and so we really encourage family members when they come to a park, when they're going on a hike, when they're going to different areas, is you want to try to educate your folks to stay on the trail. But knowing that's not always going to happen, Shane and his canine companion travel around the state educating school children. So why would I want you to hug a tree? Over yes. 25,000 kids have been taught with the Hug a Tree program that if they are lost, to stay in one place and wait for rescue. And of course, it's another opportunity for a game of hide and seek. Good job! But Chief Ranger Shane Petty sees the end of the trail coming up to meet him. The bloodhound works as fast as a human can work. And the stronger the scent, the younger the dog, the harder you go. And so there are a lot of injuries that can happen to an officer. It's a young person's job. Uh, and so trying to run through the woods, it, uh, it takes its toll on your body. When this dog is done, he says he'll retire. But we aren't completely convinced. We'll have to refigure that here in four or five years, but I think I've still got a few, few more finds in me. He's also concerned about the sacrifice that has been made on behalf of his family. But how can you fault a father who has saved so many lives? Um, I was always really proud of him and, and everything that he did with his, his dogs and his bloodhounds. I mean, sometimes I felt like it was just a pet, but you know, you go home and you see these news stories that it's not just our family dog or, or my dad doing something. It was, uh, it was a really special, special way to grow up. Shane's daughter Hannah is happy to sit on the sidelines with her new baby and watch her older children take over the hide and seek training. And they anxiously await every opportunity to reward Swabe for finding their hiding spot. Good girl, Swabe. Good girl. I'm Annette Noel Hall on the wild side. Even when he does retire, Chief Ranger Shane Petty says he expects to continue training the search and rescue dogs. His advice to adults, if you're going hiking, always let someone know where you're going and when you expect to be back. To parents, he says it's so important to teach children to stay on the trails.